Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Odd that this is the most requested episode I've gotten, but basically we are repairing the windshield motor and actually upgrading it for this International Scout 2. This actually applies to a lot of older vehicles. The motor just starts dying. Here's a video of me a few weeks ago timing the actual uh, motor. Three, four, five. All right, so it's about five and 15 seconds on that setting. Four, five. So that's about five and 15 seconds on that setting. That didn't work out so well. So what I did was I took it apart. I cleaned the uh, things inside, you know, the, the place where the brushes run. The name's escaping me. But in any case, I put it back together. It really didn't make any improvement. So that motor's kind of hooped. And, um, and those international wiper motors are pretty expensive. So what I've done instead is I've picked up a mid-90s Cherokee windshield wiper motor. Now these three bolts go on to the Scout's bracket and they match up perfectly. The only difference is they're M6 by one metric. Now, the motor I bought off of eBay comes with the hardware, but I, being trying to be a planner, bought it anyway. Uh, so now I gotta go return that hardware. But uh, hopefully you'll get lucky and uh, you'll, you know, you'll get hardware with yours. The other things you're going to need, other than the new motor, is a five position relay, not a four position. These are the standard. It's got five positions. That's why it's a five pin relay. And, uh, and the reason for that is these newer motors, they come with five wires. And the Scout had three. So uh, other than that, you need some basic tools, something to grind off um, the scout wheel so you see the this is riveted in and you need this arm because of this connection method the new uh, or rebuilt Cherokee motors don't don't come with an arm and and even if they did it wouldn't be uh, the right one for the scout I, I can't take credit for this idea uh, I got this off of binder planet the uh, poster was just at 67 Farmall Club and he get, gives a great write-up I'll put a link in it below but he, um, he shows you uh, the schematic for wiring, which probably you can't really see, but it shows you how to wire the relay and then uh, how to cut holes in that original bracket. I don't think I need to cut such violent holes, but we'll see. I'm gonna mock it up and then I'll show you guys the final um, hole position once I figure out what it's supposed to be. Right now, I'm just gonna, I've disconnected the battery. I'm just gonna take the windshield wiper motor out because I'm not sure which is high and which is low. The reason why this isn't plug and play is even though the motor itself is smaller, the gearbox is actually much bigger on the Cherokee motor. So, you know, if you can imagine you're looking at, at the Scout from the front, like we're looking into the cab, this slides under your cowl, like underneath the fresh air vent, and this motor turns the bar towards the windshield wipers heading towards the driver. This hits underneath the sheet metal underneath the cowl. Now you could theoretically go clearance the cowl, but I don't know how much I would have to clearance. And what um, Just Hut does in his write-up is he makes these holes in different positions. Basically, you know, putting a hole there and then moving that, and that'll allow you to rotate, rotate the motor up a little bit and that should give you enough clearance to uh, just barely clear the motor. I was able to get these two bolts in, but I can't rotate it, and it needs to be rotated in position to get this up enough so that the arm doesn't hit the cowl. So you have to do this. It's probably the biggest pain of this um, installation. So I'm gonna drill those now and then test fit it. I've got it test fit. It fits really well up there. So you can go to the other side of the car and peek down the cowl and you can see there's clearance to this, this screw, which there wasn't before. And really it was just opening up this hole. I ended up using this hole, just opening it slightly. I didn't even need this hole, but at least my Scout's lighter now. One additional tip is um, when you're doing this, uh, get a tap and die set from Harbor Freight. The nicer one, I get the nicer one, but basically run all your bolts through them and run a tap through your holes. It makes putting everything together so much easier. 
I also use this stuff on final assembly. Um, Bow Shields T9 bicycle chain lube. It just makes everything stay rust free and clean. Now we got to cut this, uh, or gr you can either cut or grind this rivet off. I've got the bandsaw, so I'm just gonna cut it down to minimize grinder dust. That's some really hard metal. Um, I cut the button off, but I still need to hit it with the grinder. Less, less than without it though. Okay, you can kind of see the outline. Well, you can't, but I can. You can kind of see the outline there. So, time to punch it out. Okay, so you can see that star pattern. And the new motor is a double, double D pattern. So you basically have to hog out this star hole to fit along the double D. Basically just means elongating one end. So I'm going to do that with a file, go slow, test fit. All right, took some finesse, but it's a nice tight fit. It's ovaled out and it fits very tightly over that. And that is what you need to do. So mechanically, we're done. Supplied nut. Uh, you know, I would tighten everything up before you do that, but now it's just electrical. I'm probably gonna get asked this, but this is the part and there's the skew. Okay, each, each uh, relay is standard and you got, in this case, 86 and 87, they are blue and white on this connector and they uh, get connected together. So I'm just gonna splice all three of them together. I want it to go to one wire because I'm using weather pack connectors and it's hard to do two wires on a weather pack connector. I bought a whole bunch of these nice high quality automotive wires online. Uh, you know, the Sentex is gonna come with extra, but I did this a long time ago. And uh, this wire is so much better than the stuff you get at the auto parts stores. No offense, Chris. Okay, I got all my cables, 19 inches and one shorter black one. I'm gonna I'm gonna do all these up. Okay, all my joints are soldered. Put one big piece of shrink wrap. Okay, I got my four um, male weather pack connectors. Uh, just to save you the the brain damage, this this bend here. Okay, it. You have to kind of rotate in and this needs to go behind the bar that supports the captive nut that this hole goes into So it'll go both ways, but then you won't be able to get your nut or your uh, bolt into the hole So you got to make sure this kind of slides behind and it's a bit finicky Another warning. This is the retainer piece that slides over the arm Okay, don't lose this Do not lose that and um, You know don't let it fall down the uh, quarter panel or the fender there. Oh, sprung a leak. Thank goodness for Mrs. Matt's garage here. The install's done. The motor's tucked in back there. I've got my wires going to a four wire weather pack connector. And then uh, I needed a one, there's five total wires. So uh, one, a single also. So it's wired just like that uh, diagram said. So let's hook up the battery and see how she does. Let's bench test it because it's not working right now. I'm wondering if it's a ground or a interference or what. Good enough. Okay, good. Check this out. Bad relay. It kind of works. The switch works, the relay works, the motor works. Everything works, but when I go to hook it up, it hangs up somewhere. So somewhere in this cycle, it's getting jammed up. But I figured it out. The arm is catching on the nut. Do you see how the arm would be coming across here and it hits the nut. That's what's happening. 
You know what? To heck with it. It's Matt's garage. We're welding. Only truth, baby. Note to Scout. Maybe your spring load didn't need to be quite so high. Six, seven, eight, nine. I'm calling it success. The windshield wipers work, and they work exactly as they're supposed to. I doubled my speed, so I was getting five every 15 seconds, and now I'm getting almost a little more than nine every 15 seconds in high speed. So this was a huge improvement. I've got a serviceable part. I had to weld the, um, the arm on, which I didn't want to do, but hey, you know, sometimes you gotta make these things happen. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of a pain. Thank you for Just at 67 on Binder Planet for posting this. Um, go out there and fix your scalp. See you next time on Matt's Garage.